Treasurer Wayne Swan flies out to Washington this morning for the annual meeting of the IMF. It was in an emergency IMF talks two years ago that the world's finance ministers realised just how dire the economic crisis had become and what was looming. In its latest World Economic Outlook overnight, the IMF says risks remain, saying that, saying that some advanced economies were slowing noticeably and that the, quote, sovereign and banking vulnerabilities remain a significant challenge. Wayne Swan's in our Parliament House studio. Treasurer, good morning. Good morning, friends. Good to be with you. Treasurer, the IMF's World Economic Update released overnight has a positive outlook for Australia but it does say, quote, that financial stability has suffered a major setback this year. What's your reading of the global recovery? Well, it's a very big tick for the Australian economy. It's very clear amongst advanced economies that the Australian economy is leading the way. But when it comes to the global economy and particularly other advanced economies, they make the point that uh, global growth is fragile and that there are risks on the downside. The IMF is warning that some advanced economies are slowing noticeably. That's the quote. In Tuesday, another IMF report said the recovery had begun to lose lose steam. Does that mean you're going to be discussing further stimulus measures at this IMF meeting? Well, certainly there's a, there's a discussion about that in a number of advanced economies, but fortunately our region is far stronger than many other regions. But, Fran, I think the important thing to note is that uh, on this day, two years ago, uh, we commenced one of the most important uh, weeks in Australian economic history. I think it was on this day, two years ago, that the Reserve Bank cut interest rates by 100 basis points. Uh, It was in this week, coming week, uh, two years ago, that I was actually in Washington and New York. In fact, I think I was on the floor of the New York Stock Exchange when it dropped dramatically, uh, one of the biggest drops in its history. And of course, in this coming week, this was the week in which we announced the bank guarantees. And of course, in this week, uh, was the week that we announced the very first stimulus package. Now, all of that is relevant because it tells us how far Australia has come in the past two years and how far we have come relative to other advanced economies. Because one of the reasons that the other advanced economies are weak is because they still bear the scars uh, of this global recession. But of course, we don't bear the same scars because here in Australia, we acted early, we acted decisively, we put in place the bank guarantees, and of course, we put in place a very, very critical and important pre-Christmas stimulus package that put a floor under confidence over the Christmas period. Well, given that, two years on, as you say, Australia is clearly outperforming most of the developed countries. I might have missed it, but have you ever declared Australia is out of the woods? Well, certainly we're doing uh, much better than many other, in fact, almost all other, Uh, advanced economies. But of course, we are not immune uh, from what goes on in the global economy. Excuse me, friend. We're certainly not immune from what's going on in the global economy. But of course, we're fortunate to be in the right place in the world at the right time. Uh, Asian economies are still growing much more strongly. But as we go forward, the thing I think that all Australians can be optimistic about is that our region will supply a greater proportion of global growth as we go forward. Some suggest that this meeting in Washington could be uh, overwhelmed by what they're calling the currency wars, in particular the dispute between US and China over the yuan. Washington believes Beijing's keeping yuan artificially weak to benefit Chinese exports. Does Australia have a position on this? Well, Fran, these are matters that are discussed uh, particularly uh, through the G20, but they are also discussed uh, at the IMF, and they are part of a discussion at the G20 in terms of the framework for sustained and balanced growth. But you've got to consider the currency issue along with a whole host of other structural issues in the economy, trade and so on. Uh, That's where the the discussion will really take place and I think there'll be a focus as we go forward to the G20 leaders meeting in Seoul. As the treasurer of this country, are you worried about our appreciating dollar? It's over 97 cents, I think. Is it undermining the the, the government's plans to return to surplus that time? Well, I don't don't speculate about the level of the dollar, but there is no doubt. We don't need to speculate right now. It's 97 cents but I make it very clear that I don't. Uh, There's no doubt that a higher dollar does have an impact on the incomes of uh, many exporters. There's no doubt about that. And it has other consequences throughout our economy. But our dollar is floating uh, and it is very much involved in or is involved in a market mechanism. So I don't speculate about uh, where it heads. Treasurer, the front page of the Australian newspaper today says business leaders at a forum yesterday, senior business leaders, claimed there's a culture of retribution for speaking out about policy from thin-skinned politicians. Do you ever pick up the phone to business leaders who disagree with the government's policies and let them have it? 
Well, I pick up the phone all of the time, but I do it to engage with the business community. I find the business community a very important source of advice, a very important source of intelligence. I'm on the phone to the business community all of the time, and the business community frequently talks to me. And I'd certainly encourage anyone in the business community who's got those views to pick up the phone and give me a call. Does it I'm, worry more you happy, I'm more than happy to talk to them. Does it uh, worry you, Reid, that Catherine Livingston, the chairman of, of Telstra, says that... Um, uh, the consequences and retribution uh, are there. Um, Mr. Marshall, who's John Marshall, chairman of ANZ, says the retribution situation has been rather prevalent of late. Are you worried about this? Uh, no, I'm not worried about it because I've got an open door. I'm uh, always available to talk to the business community, and I sometimes have uh, have uh, quite uh, good discussions and sometimes strong discussions with members of the business community. I mean, as you know, uh, I've got some very strong views about uh, what the banks uh, should and shouldn't do when it comes to out-of-cycle rate rises. That's entirely appropriate because that's my job and I don't shirk from expressing those views, but I talk to uh, but there's the people no right across the business th community. There's no threats att att attached. You don't believe there's a culture of retribution? No, I certainly don't. But I certainly would do welcome uh, an exchange with any of those individuals that uh, uh, are in a newspaper today. I'm, I'm out talking to people all of the time. I welcome that. And by the way, Fran, I welcome their participation in the public debate. Well, they're in the public debate at the moment, and in a few moments we're going to take a closer look at the mining tax because the Argus Committee uh, starts its deliberations today. Uh, some, many are questioning your claim that this mining tax will raise $10.5 billion over two years. Some say it'll raise much less than that, as low as $2.5 billion. Why won't you release your revenue figures and assumptions? Well, because there's a, a very common sense reason for this, Fran. We engage uh, in the Treasury in discussions with companies all the time, and in particular in mining companies companies, with mining companies, and they provide to us commercial and confidence, confidence information, uh, which is very market sensitive. And it is simply absurd uh, to suggest that sort of information should be put into the public arena. If that occurred, there would be no contact between the Treasury and significant companies over matters of great national importance, then, and there wouldn't be the flow of information that is required to make good public policy. What's so People sensitive, though, about commodity price assumptions? I mean, at global analysts all the time come up with commodity price forecasts. ABEAR comes up, they Treasury certainly do. comes up. And the Treasury never has, not under the previous government or under this government, uh, published the detailed information about individual commodities. It's never been done. And the discussions that the Treasury has uh, with commercial organisations are of necessity in confidence, and it would be extremely damaging both to the companies and to our national interest if those sorts of individual figures were released. And people who are suggesting that, I think, are being grossly irresponsible. So we should just believe you when you say this will raise $10.5 billion? They are the Treasury forecast, and yes, everybody has relied upon the Treasury for those forecasts for a very long period of time. And finally, Treasurer, small miners are worried that you will broaden this mining tax beyond its current application to plug a hole in the costings. Can you guarantee them that that won't happen? They won't be the ones left uh, carrying the burden? Uh, yes, I, I, I can guarantee that the design that is being consulted on by the Argus Committee is the design that we are absolutely committed to and we are sticking to. Treasurer, thank you very much for joining us. Good to be with you. Treasurer Wayne Swan about to jump on a plane to Washington for that IMF meeting. It's 17 to 8.